Ooh, pretty. Hey, my name's Cody and you're watching Lunch Ride. Lately, I've had a couple questions about the gear that I use to film these episodes. So I thought that I would take a second to go over the cameras that I use on the trail, as well as the gear that I use to film segments like this. In fact, I'm hoping that this will be the first installment of a series of videos where I hope to show you the gear that I use and later detail how I use that gear on the trail, the settings that I use, and possibly show you how I edit these videos together. I kind of start to finish on how these Lunch Ride videos are made. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing, leave a comment below, yay or nay. If you just want me to shut my damn mouth and get back on the manual machine, you can say that too. Well, to start off with, let's break this down into some categories. I will go over cameras, tripods, and the stuff that I use to hold the cameras, and then the computer hardware. First, the camera that I've used for most of the life of this channel has been the GoPro Hero 5. I use this primarily with the Karma Grip. This is the setup that I use for trail cam videos. I mount it right there. I also have the new GoPro Hero 7 Black. It's a better camera all around, but I use it primarily for second camera stuff or as a chin mount because the stabilization is so good. I also use this Sony RX105, I guess is what it called, the Mark V. 100V. This is the camera that I use for the majority of these straight talking segments like this. Plus it has this tilt up screen so I can see myself in the monitor. There is of course also the drone, the DJI Mavic Air. I haven't used it as much as I would like to, but that's coming. And I will say that I've used my phone as well. I've used my iPhone quite a bit to film stuff. I even shot this segment here entirely on my iPhone. To hold the camera when I'm doing my trail riding, I use the Stuntman chest mount. I used a real cheap one for a while, like the kind that you get in those kits on Amazon that have like 700 different attachments for 19 bucks. But no matter how tight I made the straps, it just shook too much, making the gimbal bounce up and down. So I upgraded to this. It's a better product all around. It's comfortable and a lot more secure. I highly recommend it. In fact, if you're interested in any of these products, there's links to them in the description below. If you use those links, it really helps the channel out. Out. Now, I mentioned the gimbal. Yeah. It's the Karma Grip. Maybe if I had to do it all over again, I would have gone with like the Evo SS or the Feiyu or however you say that. Feiyu? Feiyu? Fei whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Feiyu? I mean, but this is fine. Well, kind of. Here's where it sucks. Out of the box, it's worn like this. Like this, right? Like this. The problem is, one, with the weight of the battery down here, as you're going down the trail, it starts bouncing like that, which is too much for the gimbal to keep up with a lot of times. So I'd have to wear another strap here just to keep this steady. Then if you're going really far back, like if you get way back on the bike, like for a drop, a manual or something like that, this has a tendency to hit the saddle and shake all around like this part right here and this one. See, it looks like a massive crash, but it's really just the saddle touching the gimbal. Yeah. So the solution is this stupid, expensive cable. You remove the gimbal head, put that on here. Ow. Pinch yourself. Put this back on here like this. Plug this. It's been forever trying to get that tight. Turn it back on. Now you can put the battery pack, which is what this handle actually is, in your backpack and just have this up front which is nice, but anytime you want to turn the gimbal on and off, you have to take off your backpack to get to the battery. You can use the voice commands or the buttons on the GoPro, but that actually just turns the GoPro off. That doesn't turn the gimbal off. Plus, the coil on the cable is just a little too stiff, so if you put it too far away, it starts pulling on the gimbal head. So what I found is actually this device, which clicks in. This allows me to attach the handle to the strap of my pack. So I have access to the power buttons. The cord isn't pulling on the gimbal head. Now also, noted by everybody, the audio sucks. It just flat out sucks. More on that later. All right, so I've been talking a lot of crap, but here's why I like the Karma Grip. Using it off the harness is definitely easier to use. Having the controls right here available where I can adjust the angle of it, like you know, pointing down like that or up, you know? Like, that's pretty cool. But the handle helps a great deal in keeping the shot steady. So that's a plus. 
Other than the gimbal with the stuntman chest mount, I also use a Joby Gorillapod tripod. Again, I had the little cheap version that come with the Amazon kit and I broke that on my first time out shooting with it. You get what you pay for, right? This thing is pretty great. It's durable. I can wrap it around a tree branch like that, you know? Use it like this for like vlogging or just set it down. I like it, I can put it almost anywhere. Then, when using the iPhone, there is this little thing that clamps onto the phone. Put it on there, screw it down. Clamps onto the phone like that. Screw that onto the tripod and use this to film. It's the Ulanzi ST03. I also use this Manfrotto tripod, the one that you're standing on now. I don't use it on the trail, it's too big and doesn't fit in my pack. It's super stable and easy to use. I've had it for years and years as part of my regular photography kit. It's got a Manfrotto ball head with a quick release plate. I have a couple extra of these plates that I can just attach to the bottom of the cameras so it's easy to switch out and change which cameras I use on the tripod. So on all of these cameras, the audio is not great. Some are better than others, but none of them are great. That's kind of the case with every camera, but especially the GoPros and especially the GoPros with the Karma Grip. The audio just downright sucks. For one thing, the mics are covered by the housing. You can fix that by drilling holes into it. However, if it's on the wind microphones that are on the side, they're right next to the servos, and so all you hear is motor noise. Even with modifications made to it, it's still awful audio, even with the Hero 7. So when I do POV trail cam videos, what I use to get better sound is a Zoom F1 field recorder. This with a lavalier microphone. Uh, what's a lavalier microphone, you ask? Think newscaster, TV interview, little microphone. Put a dead cat on it, a little fuzzy. I guess at this size it'd be like a dead mouse. Put a dead mouse, dead mouse. Some fur, windscreen fur on that. And I actually, I clip it to one of the straps of the stuntman chest harness and then just put this in my pocket. It can record up to 44 hours of audio. So I usually just let this run for the entire trail ride. Then I sync up all the video to that one audio track later. But it also sounds better than the Hero 7 that I mount to the chin bar of my helmet. It sounds okay, but it's just too close to my mouth. So a lot of times the loudest thing you're gonna hear is breathing. That's kind of gross. So using the mic that's a little further from my mouth, it can still hear anything that I have to say, but also it picks up the trail noise a little bit better. And we all love the way that sounds. Now, when I'm filming on the trail side, when I'm not riding, I'm filming other riders. Of course, like we said, the in-camera audio sucks, but actually the, the lavalier mic on the F1 isn't really the best mic for that either. That will pick up everything around me, but to get that really isolated trail noise, I need a different mic. So I use the Zoom H1N, which I'm using right now to record this audio. And then I use with that the Rode Video Micro. It's a great little mic and put a little dead cat on it. It actually sounds really good. So that covers most of the filming and recording gear. And when I'm done, I bring it in here. This is a MacBook Pro with a 500 gig SSD hard drive. 500 gigs is not a lot of room once you start doing video or photography for that matter. So over here is the storage array. This is a two terabyte drive for photography. This is a six terabyte drive for video, and this is the Drobo with 16 terabytes for backup. I'll copy all the media that I've collected onto the video drive. Then I'll put whatever projects that I'm currently working on onto this 500 gig portable SSD drive. That way it's super fast, portable, and redundant. Again, links to most of the stuff that I'm using here are in the description below. If there's something that I missed or something that you want more details on, leave a comment below or go to lunchridemtb.com and shoot me an email. My name's Cody and you're watching Lunch Ride. If you liked the video, if you thought it was helpful, hit like, subscribe, share with your friends. Until next time.